We've all been there. It's Sunday night, you're scrolling through your feed watching endless videos of seemingly perfect routines and you've decided that this week, this will be the week that you finally get your whole life on track. You promise yourself you'll wake up at 5am every day this week, you'll do an hour at the gym, meal prep a salad for lunch and maybe even a green juice while you're at it. But then fast forward, it's 5am, the alarm goes off and suddenly this doesn't seem like a great idea after all. By Wednesday you're already exhausted and sick of salads and you decide that maybe that's enough gym for this week. That night you're back on your phone and you're wondering, but how does everyone else do it? Firstly, they probably don't. It's normal, actually healthy, to not always be on, to not always be striving or becoming better, building a routine or building anything in fact. Sometimes it's great to just press snooze. That said, I wouldn't be without my routines. They keep me happier and healthier. So today we're going to talk about building gentle, sustainable routines that you don't regret by Wednesday. If you can hear absolute chaos that's happening by my feet, it is because Poppy is staying at the moment. Poppy is my family dog um, and the two of them are fighting over a toy at my feet as we speak and trying to get me to throw it for them. But yes, official hello. Good morning, welcome back. I have been having a bit of a think and I really want to have a big chat with you today about making all the changes that we've made over the last six weeks into more of like a lifestyle, like how to stay consistent, how to make your habits sustainable, how to maintain motivation, especially for those of you that have been doing this with me and are finishing up on the six week challenge. This is not going to be the last video in the six week series. And actually I have some plans to continue the Becoming Her series much beyond the six weeks, but specifically for this six week challenge, I think I'm gonna post the last video on Wednesday and that'll be more of like a big overview of how I found the last six weeks, what I've learned, what I've changed, what I've gained, what habits I'm going to be keeping and all of that stuff. Today I really wanted to focus on talking about consistency and motivation and I guess kind of just share some of the tips that I have picked up over the years of trying to build a healthy routine that works for me and all of the stuff that I've read in books about building healthy habits and routines and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do this afternoon. But this morning I need to take these girls out because they're very restless. And I also wanna pop into my favorite juice spot because Kenny and my mum have both been ill in the last week and I'm just really, really clinging on and trying not to get it. So I thought I'd go and pick myself up a juice and they've got loads of different ones. Um, and I think they've got like an immunity one and a green one and all the good stuff that we need. But side note, then I need to come home. I need to get ready because I've got some meetings and stuff around lunchtime. But once they're all out of the way, I will sit down with you this afternoon and we can have a big chat um, about everything we just talked about. It's typical, isn't it? Just as I'm about to take them out. Look at these two angels now. Doesn't she look so much more like a chihuahua when she's got her hair short? Yes, you're so gorgeous. Can you wake up, Pop? Can you say it's time to go? Apparently Poppy's exhausted now, hmm? Oh, look at this. Don't terrorize her, Rue. You're sick of Rue, aren't you? You've had enough of Rue. Mm. Look, we're best friends now. Yeah, because you were biting. Oh. Are we the four best friends? Because kangaroo has to come everywhere, hey? Is that what you say, Rue? You're my big girl. And you're my tiny girl. We are back from the walk. 
I just love my morning walks so much. I feel like nothing wakes you up quite like a morning walk. I know I'm such a broken record on this. I feel like it's definitely one of my necessary things in my morning routine. I know when you've got like a really, really busy morning, it can feel like such an unnecessary kind of luxury to take yourself out for a walk. But honestly, even just doing 10 minutes, if that's all you have time for, it just does something. I can't help but feel like it's something innate in us about getting outside and just like resetting. Maybe it's a natural daylight, I don't know, but it always makes me feel so good and so ready for the day. One of the things that I'm always really conscious of when I do my daily walks is making sure that I feel safe, especially because I always do my walks listening to podcasts or sometimes I call my mum. So I wanted to share my open fit wireless earbuds by Shox, who very kindly sponsored this part of the video. So one of the things that I love most about these earbuds is they have this cutting edge technology called direct pitch, which basically ensures sound transmission in a specific direction, which is what allows you to maintain situational awareness because you can hear everything that's going on around around you without compromising on the sound quality of the music you're listening to or the podcast that you're listening to. The open ear design of these earbuds also makes them so comfortable for long walks. You don't get that kind of achy feeling that you can sometimes get with in-ear headphones. Because of this Dolphin Arc ear hook and the ultra soft dual layered silicone, they feel really nice and secure in your ears. They're also super lightweight, like they weigh nothing at all. And the little case they come with is really compact. I also love the color of these headphones. I like anything in like a neutral beige kind of color. I just thought I would share these with you because I know that we are all girls that love our podcasts, we are all girls that love our long walks, but it is also so important to feel safe, which is something that is at the forefront of what Shocks is all about. So I will leave a link to these in my description if you want to go and have a look. Okay, I'm gonna drive home. Let's go get this day started. Ginger. So much ginger. Can you believe that we are already at the end of week five of the Becoming Her challenge? It has flown by. I cannot tell you how much I've loved doing it. I feel so good for having really stuck to it and so many amazing things and opportunities have happened over the last few weeks. If you're a manifesting girl, you will totally get this, but it always just amazes me how whenever you raise your vibe, you attract so much more into your life. It just happens every single time and it blows my mind every single time. Anyway, today we're going to chat about making healthy habits sustainable long term and achieving consistency and making these daily habits more of like a lifestyle. So if you have been doing the six week challenge, I thought now was a really great time to kind of chat about consistency and maintain maintaining this long term um, and if you haven't been doing the challenge I will link it down below it's not too late at all um, in our little Facebook community there are girls that have been doing it for two weeks three weeks four weeks you can start anytime these tips kind of just apply to any healthy habits that you want to make sure become like a permanent part of your life okay so first things first and this is probably the biggest one and this is try not to set too many huge goals all at once so try to structure it as you've got your really big goals that you're working towards and then you've got a list of the smaller steps that you're going to take to get there and what you want to do is you want to add those smaller steps to your daily checklist not the big goals so for example let's say one of your goals is that you'd really like to become a morning person so that you have time to get your exercise done before you head to work rather than setting your first goals as waking up at 5am and running a 5k every morning try doing it in stages so for example first week you might just wake up half an hour earlier than you currently are you might just take a 15 minute walk to grab your coffee and a 15 minute walk back and then the next week you might wake up 45 minutes earlier and you might do a 20 minute jog and just slowly building it up like that just so that you're not completely exhausted and overwhelmed within the first kind of few days because that's when you're more likely to think this is way too hard and kind of give up on your goals altogether if you want to read more maybe rather than saying you're going to read for an hour every day start by saying you're going to read for 10 minutes every day and then build that up week by week until you're reading for an hour and a half without even noticing. By doing it in smaller stages, it's more likely that you can build up to it and it will be more sustainable long-term. Okay, so tip number two actually comes from an idea that's in the book Atomic Habits. I think the author's James Clear, if I remember correctly, but that's a really amazing book that is all about building new, healthier habits and how to make them stick. 
basically. Um, but one of the concepts in that book is about making your habits more attractive. I'm going to explain this in the way that I interpret it and how I use it, so it might not be exactly as it is in the book. It's all about pairing something that you need to do with something that you want to do. So for example, if one of the habits that you want to build is doing 30 minutes of tidying every day, which is definitely one of mine, then you might decide that that 30 minutes is going to be when you put your headphones on and you listen to your favourite podcast of the week. So it's pairing something that you might not necessarily want to do, which is the cleaning with something that you do want to do which is listening to your favorite podcast this makes it more appealing and it also over time kind of positively reinforces it you start to associate tidying with doing something that you enjoy doing which is listening to your podcast another example of that is if your goal is to do 10,000 steps outside every day which again is one of mine instead of just doing a random route around your area just purely to get the steps in you might decide to plan your route so that halfway round you get to do something that you want to do. So for example, for me, there's a really great place to get smoothies from and they do this chocolate smoothie that I just love. So if I need the extra motivation to get out on my daily walk, I will say to myself, you walk halfway there, you get your smoothie and then you can walk all the way back home with your smoothie. That might be something different for you. If you're a coffee drinker, it might be your coffee, for example. It's just this idea of pairing the habit that you want to build with something that you really enjoy doing and you really want to do to make it seem more attractive and to kind of add that element of like positive reinforcement over time as well. This third one has played a really, really huge role in my life and that is getting to know yourself first. Really doing the work to understand yourself so that you're able to play to your strengths and also just give yourself a little bit of extra help where your weaknesses might lie. So we'll start with a really small, simple example. One of my goals is to not use my phone until 9 a.m., which is roughly like an hour and a half to two hours after I wake up. And one of the things I know about myself is that if my phone is next to the bed and I have to switch my alarm off on my phone in the morning, it just adds that extra bit of temptation to just open it on automatic and start kind of scrolling through emails, through social media. And before I know it, I've spent 10 minutes on scrolling on my phone when I wasn't supposed to look at it for the first hour and a half. That's something I know is a weakness of mine. If my phone is there, I will find it really hard to resist doing that. So for me, it's worth investing in an alarm clock so that I'm able to leave my phone outside of the room and I don't have that temptation as soon as I open my eyes in the morning. So that's like a really simple thing that I just know about myself and I can put the system in place to stop that from happening. But this can also be a much bigger kind of journey to understanding yourself and to understanding your own behaviors and why you do things the way that you do them. And this is something that therapy has really really done for me. I understand myself in ways that I never ever did before I started therapy and because it allows me to understand how my brain works, again it allows me to put systems in place that are more likely to lead to success. So I know I'm a person that needs structure, I'm a person that needs to-do lists, I need that kind of order in my life to function efficiently. I've said it before but I really really believe that therapy is for everyone. So step number three is really putting the work in, putting the time in to understanding yourself better so that you can build systems around that that work for you. Tip number four is to make the habits that you want to build obvious. This is another one that I think I've adapted from Atomic Habits, so definitely read that book. An example of this is my vitamins. I used to forget to take my vitamins every single day and it was simply because I put them away in the cupboard where I couldn't see them. So now what I do is the night before I put my vitamins out on the kitchen side so as soon as I come downstairs in the morning I will see them there and I can remember to take them. That's really important with probiotics as well that I take because they have to be taken on an empty stomach so every day I would eat my breakfast then I'd think damn I haven't taken my probiotics. So what I do now is I put that right next to the kettle with a bottle of water next to it so that I will definitely remember because we all know the first thing I do every day is make a cup of tea so it just reminds me in that way. Another example of this would be to put your journal and a pen ready to go next to the kettle, next to the coffee machine or maybe even where you sit to have your coffee in the morning so that you'll definitely see it and it's there and it's ready to go and you don't have to think oh I need to go upstairs and get it or anything that will add that kind of obstacle. Another good example of this that I personally do is because one of my goals is obviously to keep the house in order to keep on top of the house, to keep the house tidy. If I have something like laundry that I need to put away, I will take the folded pile and I will put it in the middle of the staircase so that you can't actually get past the laundry to get upstairs. So then next time you are going upstairs, it's there, it's in the way, and it's just much easier to remember to pick it up and go and put it away rather than when you kind of leave it in the utility room out of sight, out of mind. So yeah, making the habits that you want to build 
really obvious. Okay, so the final tip is to build in some sort of accountability system. There are lots of ways to do this. So I'm gonna tell you three that I use all the time. The first one is to ask someone else to help keep you accountable. So one of the things I often say to Kenny is that when his alarm goes off in the morning at 7 a.m., he has to make sure that I get out of bed at the same time as him. Another one is I'll sometimes say to him, take my phone off me. Just take my phone away from me. I'll hand him my phone. I'll say, don't give it back to me until I tell you I finished this thing that I really need to do. But it doesn't have to be a partner. I've also done this with my best friend, Ella. We went through a stage of journaling at the same time every day and we would tell each other one of the things we'd written down that we were grateful for. Just to have that accountability. I know she's doing it every day. She knows I'm doing it every day. Knowing that we're going to check in with each other, just make sure that we do it. A really great place to find like an accountability kind of partner would definitely be the Facebook group. I've seen you guys talking on there about becoming basically accountability partners and I love that so I will again leave a link to that in the description but even if you don't do it one-on-one -on -one with someone I've seen you post in the group your list that you've checked off at the end of the day your list at the start of the day of your intentions for that day and that kind of thing and just that kind of group support around you I think really really helps but accountability doesn't always have to come from another person. One thing that really helps me stay accountable is my Apple Watch. I know that it doesn't work for everyone and this kind of feeds into the whole thing about getting to know yourself, to know what will work. But for me, my Apple Watch really, really motivates me. When it says things like, you're one workout away from a seven workout week, it really just makes me think, I will go on that walk. I'm gonna do my seven workout week. Um, and again, when it comes to the end of the day and it tells me I've got 40 move points left until I've closed my move ring, it makes me think, you know what? I'll walk to the post box tonight rather than driving. And the third one that I find really, really helpful for keeping me accountable is to book onto things that you can't change or cancel. So this goes for my Pilates classes. I can't cancel them once they're booked, but it also applies to booking your first therapy session. Once it's booked, and it's non-refundable and you have to go, it just gives you that accountability. But also it might be something like agreeing to meet a friend that you really don't wanna let down at the weekend, just to make sure that you're getting outside, that you're getting out of your house. So there are so many different ways that you can kind of encourage yourself to stay on track. Those three are just some of the ways that I do on a week to week basis, because I think everybody needs that extra kind of motivation, that extra push, um, that extra accountability. The final kind of point that I just wanted to touch on is just a reminder that you don't always need to be striving for something or becoming better or building a routine or building anything at all in fact. Sometimes it's important to just be where you are, be in the moment, be present and be grateful for what you have right now. Modern life has a way of making us feel like we failed if we haven't achieved something every single day. Even our days off need to be sufficiently relaxing and we need to have a reset routine or a self-care routine. But sometimes it's okay and necessary to just be, to just exist and to just not be striving for anything. I shared the other day that one of the days I recently took a break, I literally sat in bed, I watched movies and I ate chocolate buttons for the entire afternoon. And that is so important too. So don't think for a minute that every day you should be on, 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 go, 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 because that is not sustainable for anyone. So yeah, there are all the things that I do to help me stay on track, to help me stay consistent. And I suppose things I do to make these habits more of a lifestyle. And I guess that's what we should all be kind of aiming for with this six week challenge, is to figure out the parts of the challenge that you've really enjoyed, that have really added to your life, made you feel amazing, figure out ways to make them a part of your lifestyle far beyond this six week challenge. And I, of course, will be going nowhere after the six weeks. If you've been here for a while, this whole channel is all about being and feeling like the best version of ourselves. So yeah, I really, really hope that you found this helpful. If you've been doing the six week challenge with me or if you're just about to start, I am so proud of you. Just seeing all of your daily posts and all of the things that you're achieving on the Facebook group, just my heart could explode looking at it every day. So thank you so much for being here. Good luck with this last week. Bye guys.